Hey, this is Shane from Forms EV. Today we're going to try and get the car ready to do another little test drive. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, for those of you new to this channel, this is my project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. And um, yeah, today we're going to try and button up a few things I've been working on over the past few weeks uh, to try a second drive in and out of the garage and see if it's a bit more controlled than the last one. So we're in the first few days, first day of lockdown for COVID here in the UK. So I figured I might as well use some of my free time to just go over uh, a few things, finish off a few jobs um, so that I can get the, the car up and running. So um, most recent video is working on getting vacuum to the brake booster. System isn't perfect, but there were a bunch of good ideas in the comments section. So I'm gonna try and test a few of those, see if they make things any better, or if we can at least get the system to such a way that it gives me brakes, even if the motor is running the whole time. Um, we've got the power steering pump in place and plumbed in, so that's working great. Um, all I need to do is finish getting the um, power steering rack um, attached to the steering column. Um, it's not a difficult job, it's one bolt. Once you get the coupler aligned, and that's a total pain um, just because of access, I think I'll get it aligned for now so it's good enough. But if it needs to be adjusted, I'll do that after I've had a chance to remove things like the the fuel tank and that sort of thing. Um, and then we're gonna probably go down the back of the car and try and just tighten up the way um, the motor is held in place at the front uh, because that was it was just resting on there and that was causing the motor to kind of torque when, um, when I was driving it, which obviously isn't good for anything because it was hitting off bits and pieces of the car and um, yeah, I'm sure it wasn't doing the motor any good either. So we'll try and get that, uh, probably just a plate put over the top of that so it's, it's held more in place. And then hopefully we'll be able to get the car out into the sunshine. So once again, the awesome comments section on this uh, channel has come to the rescue when I've come across an issue. Um, so the problem that I've been having, or that you saw in the last video when uh, I turned on the pump, um, using the, the switch and relay was a kind of intermittent pulsing almost. And there have been a bunch of comments of a few different things I can try. Um, one is that maybe just the the setup on this isn't right. And it's um, basically there's, there's not enough difference between what it takes to switch it on and what it takes to switch it off, in which case I need to find a new switch. Um, another person suggested potentially using two switches, which again would be um, a, a solution if if this particular one um, doesn't have that sufficient difference between the two. And then another point was that perhaps it is actually just too close to the pump itself um, and that, that the actual airflow and switch on and off of the pump is um, confusing it essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this section out, so that's the switch and one of the, the pieces, and I'm going to put it in line here, much closer to the brake booster, so it's after, well away from the pump, and after the T-piece with the reservoir. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. So we're still getting the problem of the, the pulsing and an idea from the comment section was that the reservoir might actually be causing the pulsing to be worse. So what we're going to do is get rid of that section of the system, pull the vacuum directly from the brake booster or, and see how it goes. So the stuttering's in place, but it does actually seem to stop the motor running the whole time. And it seems to hold pressure. Um, kicks on straight away when I press the brake, ped brake pedal, but that's not the end of the world. Um, it's 
it's better than having the pump running the whole time. If I can find some way just to smooth out that kind of stuttering, then I think I can just go with this system as is. Uh, otherwise, I need to find a different switch. Um, I'll have a look for one online, but uh, this will let me drive in and out of the garage. It might kill the pump in, in short order, but um, yeah. So here we've got our shortened um, setup for the, the brake vacuum. So basically we've got our pump, uh, check valve, then the hose going up to the switch and into the brake booster itself. Um, it's pretty secure now, there doesn't seem to be any major leaks. It does pulse when the um, brake system, when the boost, when the vacuum gets low enough, um, but then the, the switch does actually turn off um, after it's pulsed for a few seconds and then it'll switch back on pretty much when I press the brake lever but I guess that's better than it being on the whole time. So we've got the power steering rack and the steering column joined up together now. Um, the toe angle on the wheels is a little bit off where it was. I guess the, the adjustment on the previous car was different. It's going to need to get a full alignment when I do actually get this out on the road because I'm planning to upgrade a few bits of the suspension and that as well. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the front of the car buttoned up for now. Um, still a whole heap of things in there that I want to uh, remove, like fuel tank and all, all that sort of stuff. But for the moment, we're going to leave that all in place. I'm going to head down the end of the car and get the, um, the motor bolted properly into position. So we're back in under the car here. And what I want to achieve is basically on this mounting point here, where we've got that bar across um, supporting the, the mount, I want to add another one on top to um, do exactly the same thing. So it'll basically keep the um, the motor from being able to pivot upwards away from the, the cross beam that it's currently on. Longer term, um, well, medium term, I want to actually bolt the um, mount onto the, the kind of triangular mount that I've got here. Um, but I'll have to take that, take it all off in order to do that, and I don't really want to do that right now. Um, and then longer term again, I think I'm going to end up creating some sort of totally separate mounting prospect for this thing because, um, yeah, I think this is kind of kind of unwieldy. Uh, there's definitely a better way to do it. But for the moment, we're just going to take some measurements, create a plate, and then if I can do this without having to undo, take out the motor, that'll be awesome, uh, but we'll see. All right, that's the holes drilled, let's get cutting. So just need to let that cool down for a bit and then we'll get it bolted into place. While that bit of plate is cooling down, I've just been in checking the wiring um, and we're actually all secure there. Um, throttles wired up, the other wires going to the inverters seem to be working the way they're supposed to, so should be good for driving. When we've got it outside and hopefully I've got you know sunlight to, to help guide me, I'm gonna basically pull all this out and put some proper connectors in there um, and make sure it's all both secure and also easily um, adjustable if I need to remove sections or take things in and out in the future. 
So hopefully we've given it long enough for the um, bit of plate to cool down. Um, let's go and see if we can get it installed. So there we have it, an extremely ugly uh, but functional enhancement <laughs> to this uh, bracket uh, should stop the, um, the motor from moving. We'll see what impact that has on the rest of the bracket um, as, we, as we try and drive, but uh, it'll do for now if we can at least get it in and out of the garage so it can have some space to, to work on uh, other things that will then be able to to hold it more securely. So we're ready for our next short test drive. We've got our um, auxiliary systems in place. We've got our brake uh, vacuum down here with our new master cylinder and brake booster, which is all good. And we've got our power steering here. Um, I'm using two separate batteries at the moment. I don't have any switches for these things. It's literally just plug and play. Um, so I'll plug them in, close the hood, and then look to getting the car going. Okay, so the car is down. We're going to get the battery hooked up to the inverter in here. Um, then we'll switch on the inverter and associated parts, and then we'll switch on the brake booster and the power steering, and then we'll try and get the car out.
So a second successful drive-ish with the car. Um, what have we learned? The brakes work really well. Uh, very nice feel to them. Um, made it easy to maneuver. Power steering not so much, which is a bit strange. So I'll need to do some digging with that. It didn't really feel that much different at all, despite the fact the pump was running. Don't appear to be any leaks in the system. Um, and yeah, this, you know, this is a setup that has worked does work with this steering rack so I'll need to do some digging with that but it's not the end of the world um, the big thing that was freaking me out when I was trying to drive it before was the brakes so now they're working um, it's going to be much easier for me to get the car in and out of the the garage to do to do different bits and pieces on it so that was yeah I'm gonna say it was successful um, not perfect but I really enjoyed it and we're now in a good place to to continue moving things forward um, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, I really enjoy kind of making these videos and getting the, the feedback on them. So please add some likes, um, comments, anything you feel you want to say. I, I do try to, to read them all. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, now that we've got the car moving again, we'll have to figure out what's next and um, yeah, keep the process moving forward. So yeah, thanks for joining us and I'll see you next time.